Welcome to this Tutor to You Sociology topic video on trends in crime and deviance, looking at crime statistics for 2020. Crime statistics in the UK are measured through a range of different formats, particularly given that not all crime is reported to the police. The most common uses are the Crime Survey of England and Wales, which is a victim report survey, and the police figures of recorded crime. One of the reasons why there are multiple measures of crime used is due to the dark figure of crime. Those crimes that are not reported to the police, either for the fear of retaliation, a lack of faith in the police, or due to a worry about incriminating themselves or a friend, relative or partner. Ordinarily, the Crime Survey of England and Wales is conducted via a survey handed out to around about 20,000 respondents. And this measures whether or not the respondent has been victim of crime in the past 12 months. For the 2020 release, due to COVID restrictions, the crime survey was extended to include a telephone survey known as the Telephone Operated Crime Survey of England and Wales. And this estimated that there were approximately 11.5 million offences between March of 2019 and June of 2020. This included the first three months of lockdown in the UK, which saw a significant decrease in people being victims of crime. In comparison, police recorded crime showed an annual decrease of 4% to 5.8 million crimes in England and Wales, which demonstrates the extent of the dark figure of crime. In this video, we're going to look at some of the highlights and trends between these two measures of criminality. First of all, homicide. Now, the Crime Survey of England and Wales does not ask whether somebody has been the victim of homicide for obvious reasons, and so records of homicides are based upon police recorded figures. In recent years, the number of homicides has increased, but this is in part due to acts of domestic terrorism and human trafficking. For example, in last year's figures were the victims of the Essex human trafficking incident, where 39 people were found dead in a lorry in Greys. This brought the number of homicides to 725 in England and Wales. Previously, this had included the deaths of those in the Manchester bombing and London terror attacks, and there has been a recent increase in homicide rates due to these incidents. However, overall, the homicide rate in the UK has fallen from a high of 1,074 in 2003. Although an interesting case to question the validity of these statistics is the inclusion of the 96 Liverpool fans killed at Hillsborough in 1989 in 2017 statistics. This is due to the successful appeal against the original coroner's verdict in 2017, but demonstrates how statistics can often be misconstrued and skew levels of criminality on their face value. The same can be said of earlier in the century, when 173 of Harold Shipman's victims were recorded in the statistics in the same year, despite uncertainty over the number of deaths and when they were killed. In recent years, there's been an increase in moral panic about knife crime in the UK, particularly in London. In 2020, there was a decrease of 1% of knife and sharp instrument offences, which booked an increasing trend. And most significantly, there was a 44% decrease in London. Whether this is due to increased stop and search policies, community efforts to stop knife crime, or an underreporting of knife crime is unknown, such as the nature of quantitative research. The decrease in London of 44% should have resulted in a larger fall in the national picture, but with only a 1% decrease nationally, this demonstrates that knife crime is increasing elsewhere in the UK. Of those crimes using a knife or sharp instrument, recorded by police, a third were linked to robbery from a person, which can be linked to theories such as strain theory with its focus on utilitarian crime. Furthermore, threats to kill accompanying knife crimes increased by 22% in the year ending June 2020. Firearms offences have continued to decrease according to police recorded figures, with a 9% decline since 2019, and this was significantly impacted by the first Covid lockdown, with a 23% decrease in the use of firearms recorded. In 2020, there were 6,228 offences, with the majority being handgun offences, but this has declined significantly since the early part of the century, when there were over 10,000 offences per year. Although, once again, these figures may actually represent only a percentage of the firearms offences that exist in the UK, with offences being less likely to be reported for fear of retaliation from offenders, particularly those involved with organised crime syndicates. 
The Telephone Operated Crime Survey of England and Wales reported that there was an estimated 1.4 million violent incidents in the previous 12 months, with again a reduction in the reporting of violent incidents in the period of the first COVID lockdown. However, police recorded figures suggested a larger figure of 1.75 million offences, and this represented an increase of 3% on the previous year. This difference between the two figures challenges the validity of both sets of statistics. Whilst it may be expected that more people would disclose that they have been a victim of violence in a survey, the opposite was actually true. It may be expected that the police recorded figure would not account for the dark figures of crime, yet it is the Crime Survey of England and Wales that under-records violent offences. Sexual offences and domestic violence is an obvious source of the dark figure of crime for reasons of not wanting to incriminate a partner or for the victim feeling that they may not be taken seriously. Sexual and domestic violence did not form part of the telephone-based survey due to ethical considerations, but the paper survey that recorded crimes to March 2020 showed that 2.2% of adults were victim of sexual assault or attempted sexual assault in the past year. Statistics on domestic violence for 2020 showed a decline in comparison to previous years at 6.1% of the population, and this is part of a long-term decline from March 2005 when 8.9% of the population recorded being a victim of domestic violence. Now, of course, definitions of sexual assault and domestic violence change, with incidents such as stalking and coercion being added as forms of offence in recent years, both of which the victim may not be aware of, or which once again questions the validity of the statistics. And finally, fraud. Once seen as a white collar crime, the prevalence of fraud can be seen to have increased greatly, particularly in the era of globalization and the growth of communications networks such as the internet. According to the Telephone Operated Crime Survey of England and Wales, it's estimated that 4.3 million people were victims of fraud by June 2020. Of course, fraud is often an invisible crime and difficult to prosecute, and so may be under-recorded in crime statistics. In 2020, there was a 4% increase in the cases reported in the National Fraud Intelligence Bureau to nearly three quarters of a million cases. Many others would be dismissed or reported to financial institutions and dropped due to smaller sums being involved. One form of fraud increasing was remote banking frauds including using handheld devices to exploit contactless technology, with a 58% increase to over 50,000 incidents. Of course, this increased during the COVID period due to the increased use of the internet to purchase goods for delivery. Now, these forms of cybercrime are often undetected for a period of time also, with the cloning of cards and identity fraud often not being discovered for years, which may skew statistics on these forms of crime. That concludes this Tutor to You Sociology topic video looking at trends in crime and deviance, focusing on crime statistics of June 2020. Thanks for watching.